Hey folks, this is Ben from RoadToVR.com and I'm here at FanFest 2015 speaking with Adam who is on the CCP VR Labs team. Adam, can you give our viewers uh, kind of the rundown on what you've been doing the last, uh, it's been about a year now for the VR yeah. Labs, right? Yeah, yeah, so the VR Labs got started um, uh, right around FanFest of last year. Um, the team came out, uh, we you know, saw the EVE stuff and went back and uh, you know, immediately kind of dove into uh, you know, the area of VR. Um, you know, our big focus uh, over the last year has really been how do we bring the people into the VR space? Um, you know, generally VR is a very much, you, know, you put it on and you're kind of isolated and uh, you're, you're blind to the world. You don't, you know, you may have a, an avatar or whatnot, but it's never, it's never really you. Um, so we've done a lot of work with uh, you know, the Microsoft Connect 2 uh, to bring the depth information from that camera into your space, mm -hmm. to allow you to look down, see your body, see your clothing, look over, see somebody standing next to you. Um, you know, one of our favorite uh, you know gags, I guess, is to you know the first time people put it on is to reach out and shake their hand uh, in VR, um, and the fact that you can like reach out and there's this thing it's completely virtual and you're touching it um, is uh, is is pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and then you know on top of being able to put you there, we're able to put your environment, your background. Um, you know anything that's you know coming through into that space, um, and that makes it uh, you know from from my point of view it makes it much safer mm -hmm. um, because you can see you can actually see obstacles uh, in your environment. You can see people, um, pets, uh, which uh, is you know for me a big thing, um, and uh, yeah. So that's uh, you know the kind of the baseline is like how how do we get the person in here, mm -hmm. and then once we've got the person in here, how do we um, in in most cases without a controller. Uh, give you an intuitive and effective way of interacting um, with the space. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of the demos you'll see downstairs use uh, our point and swipe, swipe system, mm -hmm. um, which basically you just you point at the thing, it activates, and you have multiple selections, uh, and you can cancel by you know, pulling your arm back. Um, and it turns out that that's a very intuitive, almost, you know, uh, I think one of the terms that uh, uh, the guys use is, uh, you know, like telekinetic. Yeah. You know, it's like, I look at that thing, and you're going to do something for me, <laughs> and it does it. Yeah. Um, you know, and we have, you know, we've had some great experiences. Um, we had a, a shark, starship simulator mm -hmm. uh, where you're on the deck of the starship, and to the side are two guns, and you point at the, the guns and you raise your hand, and they animate and they pop up mm -hmm. and they, they they do their thing, and it is an unbelievably powerful experience to be looking ahead at something you're going to eventually shoot. Reach your hands to the side, <laughs> you go like that, you aim out, you go like that, and the thing starts blowing up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, you know, kind of stuff that we've been uh, working on, yeah, um, and, and have a great time. So that that point and swipe system actually works surprisingly well. I found I'm not a huge fan of the Connect. Um, it has its limitations, uh, especially when it comes to gesture recognition. But that's like that might be the best way of selecting something in an interface that I've ever seen with the Connect. Is that something that other people have done or is that something that you guys dreamt up? Uh, yeah, so that was entirely uh, done in the VR Labs in, in Atlanta. Um, it actually started out with, uh, you know, we started out with, all right, we want buttons, mm -hmm. right? And so like, well, first we had like, oh, it's a physical button. You reach out and you touch it. And uh, that worked, but you know, you had to walk up to it. You had a, you know, kind of this physical space you had to touch. And that works very well for some things. Yeah. Um, but if you want something that's easy, it's got to be something you can interact with at any distance, at any time, um, and even if you're not looking at it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, first we had the, you know, that, that button, and we're like, all right, well, if the button's sitting in space, and I walk up and do it, and then we're like, well, let's put the, you know, strap the button to your body, and it's like, well, this just doesn't feel weird because now I'm, you know, kind of doing this, this, this kind of thing. Um, and then we had some like virtual joysticks where you just put your hands into a space, and you kind of start doing this to, you know, to, to control things, mm -hmm. and, and that didn't work. But we found that you know, as you, if you moved, you know, quickly, you get like this kind of nice, nice, um, you know, fast input. And so, yeah, that's when we started doing the the point and swipe, which, um, yeah, basically, you know, pops up a little marker, says, "Hey, put your hand towards here." And you go there, you get your options, and then it's very easy um, with the Connect to track uh, that kind of motion. Yeah. Um, really, the biggest difficulties, uh, you know, with the Connect, um, is that it's just extremely hard. Not because the Connect is giving you bad data or anything, but just extremely hard to interpret a gesture. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the you know some of the things we've got down there are you know require like throwing gestures, and you know you think oh yeah it's easy I do a throw and I know I know it's going to go that way, but we actually look at the data, 
And if you look at the trajectory, your hand is doing this, and then it does this, and it wiggles around at the end. And so you got to look at it and go, well, which, uh, you know, which section of that curve is it? Yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, I think it's less a problem of the connect and more of a problem of identifying the right ways to interact when you've got that level of data. And I think the point and flick is one of those things that it just, it works, and it works very, very well. Yeah. Um, and so we've experimented, again, with a lot of different interactions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got some of the ones in the, in the ship spinner, like you put your hand on the volume and you raise and lower it, mm -hmm. and you can, you know, kind of push, push, you know, push. And, and those physical things on top of being able to do the point and flick, like, you know, we've got the boxes yeah. and the, um, in the workshop, and it's great fun because you turn the boxes on and they fly out like magic, <laughs> um, and uh, you, you you can actually then punch them and kick them, so you kind of get that physical feeling, and then yeah. you put them away, and it's um it's a kind of a great uh, you know great that we can use the connect and get kind of all of this stuff, um, you know, good usability, kind of this this fun interactive you know physical interactivity, um, you know, all through this kind of single device. Mm -hmm. Now, I found that actually, like in the boxes example, which for people who haven't seen this, you, you do, you enable this particular station in this demo and you get these big green boxes in front of you and you can punch them and you can kick them. I found that that was such an enhancement to the experience just by being able to actually affect the world there. And with the Connect, it actually worked just fine. Uh, even though, you know, there's, there's noticeable latency, it still felt with the right sound effect and the right timing that you were actually hitting those things and it's like it's almost like a like a two times increase in just being there and and the feeling of the experience do you think that we're going to be moving toward a, a world where most people are going to want to interact in with vr in a large space like that where they have input um i think so um you know because again once you're there you know, you, you, it's much, you know, once you're there and you've got something like Connect, it's much easier to get that, get over that hurdle of presence. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, it's, you know, for a lot of us on the team, uh, you know, you can show us the best demo in the world, but if I look down and I don't have a body, um, it's very hard to go back to not having a body. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's funny that, you know, are, you know, are people, you know, willing to do this. I showed this thing to my brother who, um, uh, he's, he's looking to get a new, you know, build, build a new house and he was like, oh, well, we got to, have a home theater in there, and then we ran into the demos, and he's like, "Oh, we have to have a VR room instead." Yeah. Um, so I think once you you've been in it and you've experienced it, and you know we're able to offer more than just tech demos because that's that's really what this is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're here to you know kind of show the technology, get the feedback, and 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 and, and hear what the fans and everybody have to say is like, do they want this? If they do, um, then we're going to figure out you know what 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 are we going to deliver that's going to be kind of that. Um, you know, that, that amazing, uh, amazing set of experiences. Mm -hmm. And how many people is it working on the VR Labs project? Um, so, we've got, again, we've got the two studios. We have Shanghai and we have um, uh, Atlanta. I'm not certain of the numbers in Shanghai, but in Atlanta there are seven of us. Okay. So, pretty small team. Mm -hmm. And how do you guys direct what you're going to do? You just have ideas, play around with them, and start uh, adding to them as they seem promising? Um, yeah, so a lot of this stuff straight up, uh, you know, starts out as somebody has a crazy idea, they go home or they come to the office, so they, you know, they crank it out in the course of a day, and it's just like, what is what kind of interaction do I want to play with today? Um, and then we, we, we look at it, and we're like, oh, and we, you know, identify things that we can make it better, mm -hmm. um, and then it rolls into a tech demo, um, and then, you know, those tech demos, like in the case of the workshop, you know, that's a series of uh, six or seven different tech demos that mm -hmm. all kind of came together into one, one single workspace. Um, because again, as I said, the really you know the big thing is you know understanding and learning, you know how we interact in this new space. Um, so generally, you know, no idea is off the table because we're all implementers. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got uh, you know we've got uh, our tech artist uh, Hjorter, who um, just does these amazing things with uh, uh, you know the blueprint system in Unreal mm -hmm. to attach animations and avatars and stuff to your to your Connect data. Um, and you know, again, you know, he's you know he's got his, an art background, and he's he's pulling this stuff together. And we've got the hardcore engineers um, that are uh, you know adjusting lighting, and, and we all have like a million jobs because it's just a small group of us mm -hmm. that are cranking this out. Yeah. And you also had an experience where you're actually uh, networked. It's actually multiplayer. Uh, so it's it's using the connect the DK2 in a standing space, but it puts two people in uh, in one arena. Is that the only social experience you guys have tried? Um, so it started out, you know, so this is like the the, the most polished and, and, and one that's a game. 
Um, but uh, yeah, we've had a, you know a, a series of experiences, um, and this you know disc uh, the disc arena actually started out as kind of this gray box room. Um, where, you know, probably almost the size of, of this room. Mm -hmm. um, and so two, two people would come in. They were much closer than they were in the arena. So you could actually walk up, get in each other's space. Uh, and then there was giant balls in the room that you could just kind of push back and forth. Um, and just standing there in this gray room with these ba balls, pushing them back and forth, just made people giggle like, like crazy. Um, but one of the things that was amazing was because you could get that close, um, even in a virtual world where it's a, a, a you know holographic looking projection of somebody, it's not doesn't it doesn't look like real life, but it's clearly them. When you take a step in and you get in their personal space, all of that social anxiety and and, and the things that you feel when you get in someone else's space were there mm -hmm. and present, um, and it was uh, you know absolutely stunning just how how there they felt uh, in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things that I'm really excited about is. Um, how can we uh, continue to leverage this, uh, you know, the social aspect? Um, because I think that's, uh, again, extremely powerful. If I can be playing a game with you cooperatively, competitively, whether mm -hmm. it's a, a, a physical game like the disc arena or it's me and you sitting across uh, you know, a, a tabletop you know, castle RPG and, and you're playing a dungeon master and I'm, I'm playing whatever, um, the fact that I can see you and see your interactions and, and then you know, hear you and talk to you um, is going to be very powerful. Uh, and one of the things that I'm really keen on doing is figuring out a way that we can show other people who don't have the connect and don't have this experience, um, let them connect with other people who do. Be like, all right, you know, kind of have an asymmetric, uh, you yeah. know, kind of interactivity. Uh, so you don't have one, um, I've got one. Mm -hmm. So I put it on and I don't get to see you and that's a bummer, but you get to see me and hopefully that's gonna, you know, make you wanna go get one. Mm -hmm. And um, because again, I, I think this technology, this type of technology, whether it's the Connect 2, whether it's, it's something else, um, is really, really important for uh, taking VR you know, from uh, you know, kind of the, the start we've got into that anybody can get in there, feel comfortable, feel safe, and mm -hmm. just be in that space. So I noticed in all of the tech demos that I saw, the avatar is the representation of the character as seen by the Connect. It is done, as you said, in kind of a holographic way. Is is that because if you try to use the real the the RB, RGB projection, it actually just looks weird? Like you wanna you want it to look more realistic than it does? Um, no. So actually, there's just, there's, uh, it's just part of the technical limitations of the Connect Two SDK. Okay. Um, so the Connect Two uh, doesn't allow you on the PC side to, to synchronize uh, the RGB uh, with the infrared camera. Mm -hmm. um, so it will decide it's either you're capturing at 15 hertz or 30 hertz. And so you can't get simultaneous uh, images. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point, um, you know, if I'm moving my hand, you know, the hand in the infrared and the depth map will be here. The hand in the RGB will be here, and it's kind of pointless at, at that point. Um, so we just haven't even really bothered. Mm -hmm. um, now I did it with the original one um, because the original one did, did, you know, had that synchronization and it worked out great. Um, but uh, yeah, and it also, you know, you, the fact that you're you're getting that kind of ghostly image. Um, does help, you know, kind of set it apart, and you know, so you don't have the expectation that it's a real person. So, you know, cause if they look photo real and then they turn to the side and they're <laughs> hollow, um, you might have a uh, <laughs> might have a bad time. Yeah, that's yeah, that was what I was thinking. It's interesting too because the Connect does a good job of mapping an environment, but only from one angle. And you know, tr the the camera was of course built to sit in front of a TV and see you on a couch and then show you its perspective on a screen. But when you're taking that data and actually basically putting the player's head where their head is in real life and then letting them look at it, now you're at an angle where the Kinect doesn't necessarily see everything. So you're, you know, you see half your hand and- Yep, depending you put on your hands up like this and you're seeing the, the palms of your hands <laughs> on the so, back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it does seem like, um, like using that holographic style just is, it's less unsettling. It's it yeah. avoids the uncanny valley. Factor. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, so there's there, that is obviously the intentionality of of that. Um, but the the thing that that's that's really interesting is yes. So right now, all the only only real option we have is this Connect Two. Um, but you know, these sensors are you know you look you know the Connect One came out not very long ago. Now we've got the Connect Two. And the uh, advancement in the, the technology has been massive. Yeah. I mean, the difference between the depth image on the, the Connect One and the Connect Two are, are spectacular. Um, so, 
you know, I'm really you know, looking forward to what are the next generations of, of these kinds of devices, right? And if we look at depth cameras uh, you know, themselves, there's many companies that are working on them. Uh, if I believe uh, Apple bought PrimeSense, we've got Google working on their uh, Project Tango, um, Intel's got their depth camera, uh, there's a company called SoftKinetic that, that does their thing. Um, so there's a lot of companies working on this, this technology. And you know, the fact that you know, this technology is a thing that allows your computer to see you in a real context um, is, is incredibly powerful. And so you know, my hope is that we'll see more of these things come out. Um, we'll find ways to uh, you know, use potentially multiple ones. You know, my dream, of course, is you spend 25 bucks and you get a, um, a depth sensing puck. You just <laughs> stick you know, a couple, like similar to the lighthouse, right? Yeah. Um, you stick them around the room and now your entire room is captured mm -hmm. with high fidelity, you know, as many people as you want. Um, and that leads to all sorts of interesting things that can kind of come out of that. Um, so again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident, you know, if you look at where the technology has been and where it's going, mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to get better and better and better. Now, do you see actually having depth cameras as a critical part to, to what you want to see in virtual reality as opposed to just having um, finely tracked points, whether it be controllers in your hands or on your feet or that sort of thing? Um, yeah, for me, a absolutely. Um, you know, this is, you know, you know as I, I've mentioned, it's, you know, once you've had that body, it's very difficult to, you know, do a VR experience where it's not there. Yeah. Um, you know, the world can be, you know, beautiful, but, um, you know, when you want to, you know, you see a bright light and you want to put your hand up, mm -hmm. and you don't have a hand, or you've, you're just a sword, or, uh -huh. um, you know, what have you, um, that's, uh, it's, it's kind of unsettling. Yeah. Um, now, to be, you know, but to be fair, we're looking at, you know, we see the systems like the Lighthouse, which is absolutely spectacular as far as I've, you know, everything I've read, I haven't gotten to experience it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but the potential of that to be able to do, uh, you know, tracking of, you know, you know, things beyond potentially the wands and, uh, you know, maybe, oh, you put a little chest pad or something, it's got a sensor on the chest, and now you can have articulated model. Um, that is a whole nother kind of step. Right? Because the first step is how do I get myself into VR mm -hmm. as me, um, but then how can I change myself uh, and, and how, I'm, how I'm presented. Yeah. Um, so some of the demos we've got um, actually combine uh, avatar stuff, you know, uh, you know, CG, you know, uh, real-time avatars with the Kinect. Mm -hmm. um, so we've actually had um, uh, demos where you know you look at this the mirror version of yourself, and we're rendering your body in like you know it looks like black latex, and your head's been removed, and there's another head, and you've got a black cape around you, <laughs> and you reach your arms out, and the cape moves, and you can look at that and think, my God, if I could be playing a game with my buddies, and I get to be dressed up as this thing, and you know you look at me, and it's it's it, it's it's just incredibly compelling. Mm -hmm. um, so there's also you know opportunity for kind of a, a combination, um, and I'm absolutely dying to see uh, you know what we can do to integrate things like lighthouse um, with you know the work we've done uh, because I think it can, all it can do is make it you know mm -hmm. better uh, because now I've got my body oh and I pick up a sword and the sword is in my hand yeah. um, that I think is gonna be pretty uh, pretty compelling yeah I was thinking as I was experiencing these demos especially with the point and flick interface that that doesn't necessarily need to be restricted to just connect actually with light, lighthouse or any motion track thing that could be a very simple way to have a controller that's tracked with a single button, and then have infinite number of infinite. Uh, I'm sorry, infinite number of virtual buttons on there instead of having you know ten buttons on the controller. Yeah. Just point, click, and now you bring up your menu and then flick. You know any direction. Well, you and want you don't even there. need the button, right? Yeah. If you just have a little uh, right. a little Pez dispenser and you just all you do is stick your hand towards it and it comes up, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, you know we're we're really excited about you know how well that has come and, and, and things we can do with it. We've actually have iterations where we've got you know selectable lists and all sorts of other kind of variants on that. Um, you know we've you know we're just showing the kind of the core basics um, now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, you know and you know of course we're always thinking like all right, how do we make this work in mobile? Right, um, you know, I think when the mobile ca the, the the mobile has better forward facing cameras and are able to track the world more, you know, I can very easily see being able to track, you know, do some hand hand tracking all of the leap or something, and even on mobile VR being able to do the point and, point and swipe. Yeah, and if you could take one of the experiences of the three that you're showing today, just personally, and run with it and do something amazing, which one would you pick? Oh wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> that so is a, okay. So that is a million dollars. 
to develop one of those, but you have to choose just one, and oh. you have to do it now. <laughs> um, I would probably go with the disc arena. Okay. Um, and I have a, a, you know some very specific reasons why. Um, you know, the first one is uh, you know this kind of comes from a rule that we had in my my house when we were playing rock band. Um, you know, so here it is you know you're grown men with rock, with these, these these silly plastic guitars, mm -hmm. and the rule was rock stars don't sit down. <laughs> because the thing I found almost immediately was you had a completely different sensation of playing the game if you were standing up in front of the projector, you know, doing this, versus if you were kind of sitting on the couch yeah. doing this. So there's something about being physically engaged in this kind of intense activity um, that uh, kind of changes your perception of what's actually happening. Um, and, you know, you look at the disc arena and it can be extremely active. You get two good players in there and it's like some crazy dance going on. You know, they're swinging their arm and deflecting four discs at a time while they're throwing one out, dodging another one. Um, and I love the idea of making something that is that much fun and that compelling, but also actually probably good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I could go to the gym more often. I would love to do more exercise. Um, and if I had a game where I could get on in the morning and go head to head against somebody else and get my 45 minutes of exercise and come out just feeling like a rock star, um, that's what I would, I, I, I'm waiting for. <laughs> so yeah. whether it gets to be us or somebody else who does this, um, that's gonna be something that I'm gonna be very excited about. Yeah, I definitely agree there. I'm, I'm really excited to see physicality return to gaming because, I mean, sports are fun and they're games and they also do something for your body. Uh, we turn to, I think, the, the virtual and computer-generated worlds because there are things that we can do there that we can't in real life. But we are, with this technology, returning basically to being able to take our real bodies and actually do things in that virtual space. And it's yeah. really exciting. With, especially with a much lower uh, barrier to entry, yes. right? You know... Um, if I want to go do a, you know, have a disc battle, uh, first I've got to build an arena, I've got to figure out how the disc, I get shields, I got to get my buddy to come over, stand on the on, on the pad. That's not going to happen. Um, but I, if I walk into my living room in my underwear, um, and unfortunately he's going to see that, but that's his problem. Mm. Um, you, you're immediately right there, and uh, you can be anywhere doing anything. So. Yeah. Well, I thought that was a, that's a funny rule you had, and I think it applies. Remember, kids. Uh, rock stars don't sit down. So make your VR experiences engaging and uh, not not sitting down with a controller in your hand. Um, I, I think that the we're moving in that direction very quickly. I mean, Oculus is now showing you know the vast majority of their stuff. You're standing. We have Steam now. We have all your demos downstairs, getting people moving and actually having a really fun time, as opposed to the connect the kind of earlier non VR connect space where. It was really, you know, hop to the left, hop to the right, um, yeah. not really reaching out and touching things. Uh, so we're heading there, and, and it's awesome to see you guys contributing to that space. So thank you so much, Adam, for joining hey, me. Hey, well, thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks.